Hello again to all and to none, and welcome back to The Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and I hope you've enjoyed your day or evening up to this point, because it's all going downhill from here. Last time uh, was really rather a bloodbath. Good, considering uh, we were trying to fit more time into, uh, into less. Over here in Eastern Europe, Byzantium really... Uh, <clears throat> looking weak right now. They lost territory to Bulgaria, to Saruhan, their war with Epirus wrapped up, they've now lost even Castoria, so now hanging on in only Thessaly and Constantinople. I uh, think their day of reckoning might be coming just later than the usual timeline. Up in the Russian area, the Great Horde finally fell to the combined efforts of its unruly vassals in Chernigov, Odiev, and Ryazan who are now formed, well, they had a former vassal entente, but uh, that now broken. Ryazan and Odiev still allied, and Ryazan allied to Muscovy, but Chernigov looking south and allying itself with Theodoro instead. The Teutons lost a pretty bad war to Poland-Lithuania. Uh, Mazovia, I, I can't remember if they were actually involved in that war, but regardless, they made significant territorial gains from it. The Teutons looking quite weak now, even having to spit out Danzig again. Sweden looking quite weak. They did lose Stockholm to the Danes, and I seem to recall them being at war with Novgorod. Is that still the case? It is not. So Novgorod actually failing to link up its territory over here, but Denmark and Norway pouncing again on Sweden. The city of Finnmark still looking strong up here. And while I wasn't looking, England came in and crushed the Scots. The Scottish Revolution, or so one might call it, uh, is pretty much over by this point, as the Scots have lost their former capital in Lothian, as well as Ayrshire and Inverness to the English. And over in this area, we did have Afghanistan expanding significantly at the expenses of Khorasan and Baluchistan and the Timurids. That's enough of a recap, let's go ahead and get her going again, see what unfolds. Oh, and I did forget to mention the utter destruction of France at the hands of basically all of its neighbors, including Brittany, Gascony, Austria, uh, Castile and their helping Gascony. France still has a few territories and does keep all of its cores but uh, has even dropped off the Great Power List. No guy on the Great Power List has been for a little bit, right now getting crushed by the Muscovites, but uh, always nice to see the step hordes up there, uh, especially not in player hands. Speaking of, No Guy's army brought to bay over in Crimean lands by the Muscovites. Not looking good. Crimea, also involved against Nogai, appeared to have stack-wiped his army there. And yep, there is the peace deal. Muscovy taking a few provinces uh, over here. believe that would be, at the very least, Bashkortostan. Uh, possibly Penza, Simbirsk, and Samara as well. Yes, those all being claims instead of cores. Uh, I would say lends credence to that. The Ruthenian miners, still uh, still alive. Smolensk guaranteed by Novgorod still, at war with its Polotskian neighbor. And Polotsk trying to defend against Peskov and Smolensk. I think uh, they were formerly allied to Muscovy, that no longer the case, and uh, its neighbors are happy about that, perhaps rubbing their hands in glee. Over here, Galicia Valenia has lost its lands again. Uh, Nitra actually managing to pick up Premisil as well as Luo and Halix. However, their land's still split up by that Hungarian coalition-induced partition from a few episodes back. That said, Hungary feeling the hurt from Saxon, Saxony, Brandenburg, and Poland-Lithuania. They had their really strong alliance chain. Uh, are the likes of Austria and Silesia involved? Silesia, at the very least, is. Austria is not. So did Hungary initiate this war, then? No, no, Hungary is defending its ally in Silesia, the conquest of Glogau.
Hungary could stand to lose quite a bit in this war. They're probably not a co-belligerent. But, uh... Alliance breaks can be pretty rough if they happen at the wrong times. Tunis is at war with at least uh, one of the miners down here. Looks like they're at war with Seuss and Fez at the very least. That is the case. Would that be for Morocco? That is likely. Also, Tafalalt formerly looking very strong in this region, but it appears that they uh, lost most all of their land that they gained up here to Tlemceni separatists. Now they're existing only in Tafalalt itself and the province south of it, Saura. So, now the combined forces of uh, Sus and Fez doing pretty well against Tunis, but Morocco had Sus fully sieged down, has now taken back its old capital in Fez, and uh, finally looking to get back to close to its former strength. Seems to be a war going on in the HRE. Nuremberg, at the very least, involved in that. This war, Nuremberg is fighting Ansbach, Wurzburg, and Nassau. Wurzburg fighting Mainz, Ulm, and Nuremberg. Well, they've angered Ulm. I think that speaks for itself. Uh, the Wurzburg hand sign not likely to win this. Ulm going in to reinforce this. Nassau's army looking pretty weak right there. Considering they were fighting uh, 20k against 5k, I suppose one could expect that, but uh, regardless, they had some issues. Seeing Catholic Zealots up here in Denmark, has the Reformation fired? It has. Denmark has gone Protestant. We have centers of Reformation in Eger, Frankfurt, and uh, Gloucestershire. So, Denmark kind of picking that up by proxy, not actually holding on to a center of reformation. In most games, they, uh, they really seem to, but that does mean the Age of Discovery is coming to an end. I don't know when exactly the reformation started, but we'll see that change up here uh, as soon as that comes to an end. Bulgaria doing rather well for itself, coming in and plucking Castoria from Epirus. So that province changing hands a couple times. Though Epirus is still allied with Bulgaria, I can't help but wonder how that province changed hands. A mystery, if I've ever seen one. Hungary has pieced out of this war for no immediately apparent territorial losses, but have they retained some alliances? Yes, they are still allied with Naxos, Austria, Ferrara, so anybody who wanted to take a bite out of Hungary is going to have to wait. They also still retain their union over Serbia, who is still disloyal. I think they've been disloyal since the very start. It looked like they'd be uh, gotten under control a couple times, but not the case. Wallachia has managed to take Moldavia, uh, actually supporting Moldavia's independence from Crimea. But uh, it is actually Crimea now holding on to a vassal swarm. Much of Chernigov occupied by Odiev, former ally. So the triumvirate of former Great Horde vassals, very angry with each other right now, or at least uh, Odiev and Ryazan angry with Chernigov, perhaps because Chernigov took so many provinces in that earlier war of independence. After that shellacking for Muscovy, no guy, no longer a great power. Poland actually at the bottom of the list now with 215. The Mamluks still hanging on at 232. Muscovy at 234. England at 252. Hungary at 286. Persia at 297, but 425, which would be good for second place as soon as they brace the Renaissance. Austria at 301, and Castile sitting pretty at 469. So, a lot of the usual suspects, great powers at this point. Of course, the Ottomans being gone means uh, they're obviously not a great power. But, uh, guys like Austria, you can generally see on the great power list. Poland, Castile, Spain, England, Great Britain, Muscovy. So, despite the removal of some provinces, 
the strong have remained strong for the most part. Over in India, things eh, may be changing a little bit. I don't think we saw Garjot earlier. Uh, I think some of this was Bengal territory formerly, and uh, that territory now lost to Garjot. Nagar are looking quite healthy. I believe they have eaten Punjab and Multan. And uh, again, AI Raja of the Rajput Reich incoming. Great alliances for Nagaur. They have Delhi, Malwa, Sindh, and Khandesh. Perhaps uh, looking at that, they might be wanting to expand into Malwa or the former great power of Janpur. Bagulkhand also still alive, but for not much longer. Janpur finally getting off its arse and pouncing on them. Malwa, one of the folks that retained his vassals at the beginning, does have... Oh, sorry, they're one of those that's allied with Nagaur. So, uh, if Nagaur wants to expand over there, they'll have to eat a truce timer. Regardless, Malwa sitting as pretty as they can, all things considered. Though, once they share a border with Jaunpur, we'll have to see uh, what happens to them. Bahmana is still the premier power in central and southern India. Still cutting... Vijayanagar's two mainlands in half with this line of Savanur and Malanadu. Vijayanagar divided into its main portion over here, the two provinces of Goa and North Kanara, and they also hold on to Madurai in defiance of the actual nation of Madurai, who is allied with Bahmanis, perhaps uh, with the intent of getting that back. Vijayanagar's alliances Mysore, Malabar, and Baglana. So, if a war to happen down here, I'm pretty sure Balmanis' side would win, but uh, stranger things have happened. In China, I believe we still have Emperor Yan. That is the case. Not holding on to any tributaries still, and uh, really starting to hemorrhage mandate. As soon as that falls, they'll probably run into the same fate as their predecessor in Ming. As far as the Mandate of Heaven is concerned. But for now, uh, the Mandate's still very close to 50. If they need to, or if they want to make something happen, they're going to have to do it very soon. In the south, Xi and Huai looking very good of the uh, Chinese cultural miners. And uh, Wu at war. Wu at war with Liang and Yue. And losing rather badly at this point. We'll have to see what happens to them. In Southeast Asia, not much seems to have changed since last time. Lan Na is still looking pretty strong. Uh, Lan Zhang pretty well reduced, but allied with Korea, Sukhothai, and Tonggu. That means Sukhothai is free, so the game managing to do what I could not earlier and setting Ayutthaya's vassal and Sukhothai free. Khmer at war with Arakan, Mengyang, and Ava. So big war happening over here. Large battle, that is a lot of people involved on this side and a lot of people involved on this side. That battle, my lord, both of those guys had zero morale, but it is the forces of Arakan, Ava, and a couple others that are sent packing. Look at the actual name of this war. That would be the Arakani Conquest of Patain. So that would be Arakan and his allies attacking Pegu and his allies and creating a rather significant southeastern war in Asia. Malacca has regained a lot of its former power. Uh, at the start, they were left only with the province of Malacca itself and the island of Bintan, which I actually should have given to Johor, but I digress. That said, Malacca regaining all of its former territory has expanded down into Pasai's land, though that all occupied, as well as Malacca being besieged by Pasai. Still have Pagoryung mm, attempting to hold on down here with uh, 3,000 troops and 7 development. Uh, props to them for still being alive. Ternate and Tador still staring each other down over the island, which neither of them are uh, choosing to colonize. Up in Japan, 
Shogun Asukaga still looking rather strong. The Daimyo's not eminently loyal. I mean, Hotomo's fine. They're happy with uh, the Shogun. Hosokawa okay with him. Akamatsu, by the way, one of the tags that was released at the start, looking strong. In control of one, two, three, four, five provinces. Shogun Akamatsu would be fun to see, but uh, really it's Wasugi, as perhaps usual, who is the daimyo that is most able to challenge the might of the Shogun. Though they'll have to build up a pretty good alliance chain if they want to do that. They're allied with Hosokawa, Akamatsu, and Ando. So that is about everybody who's not the Shogun, ready to fight the Shogun. Perhaps we'll see that taken over as well. Korea, an ally to a lot of those people down in Southeast Asia. Let's actually see exactly who. Khmer, Lanjong, and Jin. So, just two of them, actually. But, uh, formerly a great power. And, uh, looking to become so again by attacking Yeren, who was the uh, most powerful of the remaining Jershin tribes. But it looks like Korea is going to be taking its place as the power up in this region, unless perhaps Emperor Yan has anything to say about it. In the Americas, Chickasaw looking quite strong. They've expanded again since the last time we saw them. Still uh, in a federation with Pawnee, who is over here. I've not played as a Native American at all, so I'm not really sure how these guys hold on to such large troop numbers, but uh, still pretty big armies over here. Of course, not on very high tech. Pawnee's still on tech 1. Iroquois on Tech 3. Ojibwe actually occupied by Potawatomi. So, uh, definitely some things happening over here. Perhaps a forced migration or a forced federation? Not sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Down in Mexico, yet another war happening. We earlier saw Tlaxcala really just wrecking everybody, and now having the vassals in Mishtek and Todanak. They had Todanak earlier, Mishtek is a new one. And Quiche expanding at Zapotec's expan uh, expense. Now involved in one of those wars against Aztec and Tlopanek. Tlopanek really feeling the hurt here. Who all are they fighting against? Kalima, Tarascon, and Kalishe, or, uh, Quiche. We'll uh, see what the results of that war are later on. Notably, a three-star general down here in Tarascon, Mbalaz Pui Dao. A 3641. Six shock, eminently useful to have at this stage of the game. Though Tarascon, uh, Tarascon is involved in this war against Aztec and Tlopanek. They're just not doing much. Kind of a shame. That general would be quite the asset to have. The mandate has gone up for Emperor Yan. They have secured a tributary in Chin, so that's good for them. If they can keep doing that, they uh, might be able to become a decent emperor yet. Cusco eliminated by the combined efforts of Wonka and Charka, so uh, the Sun God definitely not emerging from that region. Charka definitely looking the most able to do that. Sitting on Tech 4. Allied with only Shimu, they were formerly allied to Wonka. I'm guessing that their existence might be threatened by their powerful southern neighbor. And in Africa, things really consolidating down here. We see Safala pretty much taking over Zimbabwe. Uh, Mutapa m pretty much gone. Butwa with no allies, probably going to get eaten by their powerful orange neighbor. Same with Tumbuka and Bravi. And Makwa, none of them holding on to any allies. Sofala will probably eat them for lunch. In Central Africa, Kikonja still the eminent power. Though Kuba is looking, uh, they're looking okay. I think they're stronger, one province stronger than they start. Uh, they are sandwiched between the powers of Congo and Kikonja, though. And uh, Kasanje in three pieces. Guaranteed by Kikonja, so... Uh, I suppose if they were attacked by Congo, we could see the war for Central African hegemony. In the Great Lakes region, Rwanda allied with Lunda, Burundi, and Nakor. Is that everybody? 
Sorry, Lunda over here, so... Uh, and that's the only alliance that they have. So that could pull uh, Rwanda into some rough wars. But Burundi to their south, and Nkor, the third one? Yeah, Nkor to their north, so we have an uh, anti-Banyoro triumvirate down here. Kaffa feeling the hurt from a lot of its neighbors. They appear to have annoyed their northern neighbor in Ethiopia and its partner in crime, Medribari. So the Kingdom of Coffee, uh, a very fun nation to play, if I might add. I actually just finished the Pick Your Poison run. But uh, regardless, that not going to occur in this game. Or very likely not going to occur. Hejaz looking pretty decent in the Arabian Peninsula. They appear to have eaten Shamar and a fair bit of Yemen, including their usual capital of Sana'a. Allied with Oman and Najd, so likely hoping to eat the remnants of Yemen, and maybe then they'll look at uh, attacking their erstwhile friends. Syria looking... wow, my voice sounded awful there. Looking quite strong, allied with Kandar, Mentessa, and Aretna. Holding on to 17,000 troops, that's more than the Mamluks have at the moment, though... Uh, obviously the Mamluks a great power, Syria not, so if the chips are down... Uh, the Mamluks probably will have more than 14k. Bulgaria being crushed by a lot of people. They are at war with Hungary and Serbia. What is Karaman doing over here? Karaman actually allied to Bulgaria, trying to help them out. If they were to uh, maybe combine their forces, they could do something. As it stands, though, trying to take out Serbia's stack. Serbia actually loyal? They are. Well done, Hungary. Still currently looking like Bulgaria is going to lose this one. All of this occupied by Hungary proper, uh, except for Castoria, which has been given to Serbia. So definitely looking to expand their uh, interests in the region yet again. Still thinking that the alliance from earlier would have done well to break more of Hungary's alliances, but uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. Masovia quite strong now. Really just the recipient of a lot of land from that earlier war with the Teutonic Order, but I think this shows that they really weren't involved, though it has been ten years. Uh, regardless, all the Teutons have been wiped out, and most of that going to Mazovia, who is now a significant power in between the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Though they still look like Jaws are going to be snapped shut on them, it's just now it's the jaws of Poland and Lithuania, though they are allied to Poland. So uh, we'll see how that develops in the future. Maybe an AI back to the Piast. Who knows? Muscovy gunning for Novgorod again. Uh, Novgorod still at least somewhat strong, but only allied with Smolensk. <coughs> if they can use those forces together, they maybe have a shot against Muscovy. Novgorod's general a little bit better, in my opinion, though, uh, eh, yeah, they're, they're just better. A 3-2-1 versus a 2-2-1. So, uh, Muscovy now without its other great general of Yuri. Now it's Pyotr. Uh, he, he's not quite as good as his predecessors of Dmitri and Yuri. Ryazan and Odiev expanding significantly at Chernigov's expense, though leaving them Yelesh as a little bit of an uh, enclave. And Crimea feeling the hurt from Zaporozhi. Guessing uh, they've called in some friends to help with that. Yep, Zaporozhi at war with Crimea and all of its allies. Crimea fighting Zaporozhi individually, but also Odiev and Ryazan. They might be getting some help from their separatists, though. As Genoa taking all of Azov's state earlier while uh, Crimea was weakened, but always has to deal with those separatists, and it is a long boat trip from Genoa to the Crimea. <coughs> France losing even more, including Paris itself. Austria has pounced again while we weren't looking. While we... Yes, while we were not looking. And has taken Picardy, Co, and Paris itself, in addition to its former gains of Champagne and Vermandois. Looks like Brittany is trying to take Alencion, though uh, they've actually lost some territory as well. Normandy being spat out again. 
perhaps due to a war with Gascony, who is still holding onto that alliance with Castile that is really making all of this possible. France itself not at war right now, allied with Avignon, Baden, Lorraine, and Sardinia. Maybe not the strongest of alliance chains, but as I've mentioned in the past, you throw enough one province miners at somebody and uh, they can cause issues. Provence nearly full occupied by Toulouse, though their troops over here trying to solve that problem. Guessing that it might be might have been Toulouse's turn to call in Castile to do their dirty work for him. Aye, that is the case. So Provence likely to lose quite a bit of territory to the combined Iberian and Toulousian alliance here. Rough stuff for them. The French le uh, region turning out not as I expected. I was really thinking that uh, the man himself would become the power in the region, but that not the case. Kildar looking very good after its alliance with uh, England. They were able to take on Scotland's former ally of Tyrone. But uh, as it stands, that alliance with England broken. England with its former core in Pale, Maid, and uh, will likely be taking over Ireland as they usually do. Iceland's still alive. Iceland's still doing not much of anything, though they are the first tag that I've seen that's on Tech 8. Ah, that's because I just haven't been paying attention. Austria on Tech 9. Come on, let me click on provinces. Castile on Tech 9 as well. So Tech 9 looks like the place to be. I believe that's professional officers. And, uh... Well... I don't seem to recall it being the most significant of tax. Uh... can't remember if there's a tactics difference or anything. France actually expanding at Provence's expense. Looks like they made them hand back Maine as one of France's cores. So, uh... Toulouse not all that angry with uh, its usual overlord in France, actually feeling generous enough to hand them back Maine, which uh, usually the reason for a big fight between England and France at the start of the game. Looks like Brittany is going to be able to take Alencion. Just to claim, I, th I think uh, in one of the runs Brittany had taken Alencion, but in this one they had Normandy, so... There is that. Doesn't look like there's all that much action going on over here, though. Uh, Nitra has expanded yet again at Galicia Valinia's expense, having taken Podolia, and that's really their power base now. They still have their capital in Nitra, and they are holding on to a good alliance with Poland. So, uh, should Hungary come knocking again, maybe Nitra will be able to resist because. Hungary, now with a much more reasonable three allies and a personal union partner, as opposed to the nine that they threw at Nietzsche earlier. Other than that, the Greek miner is still alive. Epirus, again, losing Castoria to its friend in Bulgaria earlier. Also allied with Crete, still guaranteed by Naples. Maria, just holding on in a Venetian trade league that appears to have preserved its independence. Makes sense with uh, Venice pretty close to their doorstep. And Bulgaria, well, let's just say, uh, <clears throat> hmm. I can't remember the, uh, the saying. Oh dear. Regardless, dealing with some payback by the Byzantine separatists, Maybe the difference in power... Uh, I'm not sure how strong this army is. 6k versus the Separatist 12. Yeah, yeah, that's probably uh, even worse than the Byzantines had to deal with earlier when they had the Bulgarian Separatists, as that was 17 versus 21. That said, it looks like Sarahan has pounced. Indeed. Sarahan looking to expand further into Europe, having already taken... Edirne, usually the Ottomans' capital at the start. Guessing Sarahan uh, may be looking to take Macedonia, Castoria, or perhaps some of uh, the actual Bulgarian lands. In that former war, it looks like the only piece of land that was taken was Silist uh, Silistria for Hungary. Sorry, they also did take Vidin. 
And there is the timer. I hope everybody has enjoyed, or at least, uh, you know, maybe use this as an aid to fall asleep. I've been Paragon Saber. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.